Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Christy. I'm in Northern Alberta, Canada. And if you're returning, welcome back. Uh, today is, it's a really warm day here for us. And uh, today's vlog is a little different than what I've been able to do lately. Today was the first day we actually were able to put our boat in the water. So we have some clips for you from our little adventure today. And also, I'm going to do my first harvest with you. I've been harvesting out of my garden here and there, but um, today things are a little out of control. So I need to go get some stuff done. Um, I was working on weeding in the greenhouse, but it's just, it's way too hot. It's like nine o'clock still, and my greenhouse is still venting because it's that hot. So I'm just gonna wait till everything cools down before I start working in there again. But it looks very, very different than probably what you've all seen before. And we also spent the whole day yesterday trying to get ahead of the weeds. Uh, we did a lot of weeding yesterday. I had a little bit of help. And so that's a little different. So I'll give you a, uh, I'll show you around and see what's changed and what's new. And check this little clip out from our adventures today and our break uh, while it was really, really hot, too hot to work. So I hope you enjoy. I'll see you right back here in a second. the greenhouse stop venting but I'm gonna still do this anyways we have beans These here are an early variety of spaghetti squash. Um, the plant looks horrible, but man, is it ever producing well. So I'm very happy. I'm the only one in our house that eats spaghetti squash. So I'm thrilled about this. The chamomile is doing really well in this little pot. I'm gonna have to ha harvest some very soon. The raspberries are starting to get little berries on them, which is exciting.
you can hear the ravens in the background. They have found a guinea egg nest and they are having a lot of fun eating that. So that's what the squawking is about. I'll leave this cucumber till tomorrow. We'll have it with our salad. There used to be a lot more ripe Saskatoon berries on this bushes, but this is Tyson's only fruit food group. There's quite a few to harvest in coming days. This variety is called Aunt Ruby's Yellow Cherry Tomato. It is a good tomato, but it is not near as good as its neighbor that I have growing next to it, which is Ildi's Yellow Tomato. It's a cherry, or not cherry tomato. I think it is um, a grape tomato, or um, I'm not sure if it's a category of a cherry tomato, but oh my gosh, it is incredible. Ildi's Tomato that's where it's at. It far outperforms any other yellow tomato I'm growing. Sadly, there's something going on with my Lysianthus inside of the greenhouse. I don't know why. I ended up pulling some and it is still a jungle in here. Definitely need to get some weeding done and uh, thinning some plants. These peppers have finally started to put on some growth, um, but I don't see any peppers developing. I've only harvest one, harvested one bell from them, but I do see that the first uh, orange Roma is ready for picking, and I'm so excited to try it. I noticed that this little pepper is putting on some peppers and we don't want that. We want it to grow. The happy cabbage still exists. I'm on, I kind of want to see how big it'll get. The Shiloh Noel dahlias are doing really, really well in here. I don't think it'll be very long and we'll see some blooms. And I'm really impressed with the salt and pepper uh, cucumbers are doing very well up in these in these um, hanging baskets. So excited to try some of them. And I really am excited that I have a baby Halona water, uh, sorry, it's a cantaloupe starting. I just gotta find it here for you. Oh, there it is. So yeah, super excited for that one. And the plants are doing surprisingly well in these baskets. I'm really impressed with the performance. I have harvested a lot of cucumbers out of this basket already. It is a patio slicer cucumber and I'm really happy to see we have some little baby watermelons that did actually get pollinated and I'm super thrilled to see how they perform in these baskets. Very much excited. Chaz has probably got his melon spoon all polished up for this already. 
the lysianthus that we planted earlier early this season outside is doing really well it is not as tall as the stuff inside the greenhouse but as for the blooms i think it's pretty much going to be blooming at the same time maybe a few days delay um, it is still pretty weedy in here we didn't get it all done um, this is our snapdragons this is one of the many successions of snapdragons that i planted they're just, my snapdragons are really not doing very well this year for whatever reason. Um, I definitely don't know why they started to branch immediately. I didn't pinch them. So it's definitely something new that I haven't experienced before with them. This is a uh, Cosmo and I think it's called Oopsie Daisy. It's really pretty. And then we have some Dusty Miller and some Asters. They're doing okay. I've been harvesting quite a few stems from there. And then the bunny tails. Oh, I love them. I love these bunny tails so much. They're doing very well this year. And over here we have, these are a bachelor. Oh no, these are sun balls. Um, my florist calls them billy balls, but they have um, sun balls or drumstick flower. And these are a few more snapdragons. Over here we have bachelor buttons. These are black. I can't remember the name um, of them. I got the seeds from Johnny's, but basically they're a black bachelor button um, and they have a straw-like texture, a volunteer sunflower. And these here are um, some calendula that I had tucked in. And of course, Bells of Ireland. Oh my goodness, I love Bells of Ireland. They smell so good. If you've never smelled Bells of Ireland before, go to your local florist and request it. Request one in your arrangement. They are so amazing. And these are uh, forget-me-nots. I have two different colors. One is a blue and one is a rose. And then verbena. This is a repeat of what I have growing inside of the greenhouse, as well as some more forget-me-nots in the blue. So these, I've been cutting a lot of these and like harvesting a lot of these for my florists. And then this is um, a bunch of different things. There's some slogia and different things over there. This is what is making me very excited though. The onions are doing really, really good. And we're getting some decent sized onions. I don't usually have that good of luck with sets, but for for this spot, for whatever reason, they're doing really well. I still have not thinned my carrots and I need to because they're tiny and I need to get some growth on them. I'm running out of days here. So this week I have to set some time aside and get it done. It's a priority. These are some volunteer sunflowers, which I'm glad since to have them since I had um, issues with sunflowers being taken out by tarnished plant bugs in my farmed flowers so volunteers welcome over here is the damaged crop from my um tarnished plant bug invasion these here are the peach passion uh, procat sunflowers that i had planted this is one of the many successions and the peach passion is definitely one that the tarnished plant bugs really target. They love them for some reason. Whereas the ones next to them, these are double quicks, uh, double quick sunflower, and they didn't get attacked nearly as bad as those peach passions. So note to self, next year, scratch those. They are not going to be grown. This really disappointed me because these are my signature flower here on the Hotchkiss Flower Farm. And these are the Pro Cut White, um, White Light, the ones with the light colored center. And they, the, the bugs loved them. There's a couple of volunteer sunflowers in the mix of the planting. I harvested most of the uh, white sunflowers already. I've been salvaging them as much as I can. What I did in the sunflowers is I underplanted it with baby's breath. So because Procut sunflowers are a one and done, I harvested them and then I had something growing underneath um, to continue the row. These are zinnias. The plant, the tarnished plant, plant bug really loves zinnias as well and took out probably about 60% of my zinnias that I had planted. And then the chickens also had a heyday. So 
they were really drawn to the chickens and the zi- the guineas were drawn to the bugs that were on the zinnias and they got scratching in there and they made a little bit of a um, mess for me but that's okay I have several rows of them that that were taken out there are several several sections in the rows here um, this is feverfew we have two rows left of feverfew the other two rows Tyson uh, wasn't sure what they look like and um, they accidentally got pulled out, but that's okay because I did the same thing because they were really hard to tell. There was some weeds that looked just like them. Um, these are the, the quote, hairy balls, un- end quote. That's the name of them, so don't get me in trouble on YouTube land. Um, that's the name of the plant. And then these are some more baby's breath and amaranth. Um, the, the amaranth is getting hammered with the or was hammered with the, the plant bugs, and also grasshoppers. The grasshoppers really like it. So I've just been pinching them and trying to get new growth. And even if it's small, I'm still able to harvest them as little bits of filler for my florist. I know that they will get really big eventually. Um, but yeah, I will be starting a new succession of these inside the greenhouse very soon. And these are the dahlias. They... Um, I had quite a few that didn't do very well. And these here are teddy bear sunflowers. They are so too teeny tiny, like really miniature. I, I've grown these before and they were not this short. So I don't know what's going on there. Uh, but the plant bugs didn't bother them. The tarnished plant bugs left them alone for the most part. And these um, sunflowers did okay. They didn't get eaten up just the dahlias um did get a lot of damage and they just kind of withered away some of them just certain colors the lighter colored ones and the light colored uh sunflowers this is basil as filler and i lost quite a bit of it to the chickens and to the plant bugs as well which surprised me um but they are doing okay um hopefully we'll get some growth on them so we can have some filler for the for uh, bouquets and then over here is the corn um, I have three varieties of corn this is the this first variety here is called uh, my fair lady corn it is a it's supposed to be a really short season corn and um, it looks really good I started it like two weeks early before planting it out two and a half weeks I think is what it was and then this is the bodacious corn it's really pretty but I think it has either it's it needs fertilizing or it has a disease because it has yellow around the outside which I didn't remember doing this last year so I don't know I don't know what's going on with it but it looks healthy enough um it is putting on some decent growth and I did notice um Maybe it's just a moisture thing. I'm not sure, but I think it needs fertilizing. And then this one here is Allure. This Allure corn, I had really bad germination, but it's doing the best. I think, well, it's probably a tie between My Fair Lady and the Allure by how far along they are. And clearly this um, center corn, the Bodacious, is stressed out for some reason. So I'm, I think I'm just going to give it some fertilizer. It is producing tassels in the center but it's just, it's clearly something is off with it, which is, it's just strange. But yeah, look at this. It's, this is really getting close to um, starting to produce food for us. So that's making me very, very excited. I love this variety of corn so far. It is beautiful. It, it's a very nice looking corn out in the, out in the, in the garden. The bodacious, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with it. If you have any suggestions, can you please let me know? I'm not very, I don't have a lot of knowledge when it comes to corn because corn does not grow very well in our climate and it's not really done. So uh, I'm just winging it, guys. Give me some advice. The potatoes, do you remember when me and Chaz, or Chaz and I, sorry, when Chaz and I planted the potatoes? They are doing very well. I did notice that I have some leaf curl and I do suspect that they are being attacked buy some bugs um as well but i don't use spray so we're just letting it kind of 
pan out and do its thing. Um, definitely need to weed it. But it, it's I'm happy with it so far. I have the three rows, the two rows of red potatoes, which are these two. And then the one on the far right is white potato. And look at that, we have blooms. So uh, in two weeks from now, hopefully they'll all go into bloom. And in two weeks from now, we should be able to start stealing some potatoes, some baby potatoes for supper and the white ones. The white potatoes have actually been blooming. They started blooming about a week ago. That's probably one of the last blooms there. So we'll probably be able to steal some potatoes from there soon. So I made a decision yesterday that I was kind of on the fence about. I wasn't sure whether or not it was going to be right for me to do this year or not. And I decided um, I am gonna go for it and I'm going to do something a little bit crazy. So um, I'm starting to see a little bit more um, success outside with the cut flowers and whatnot. And I didn't get as much food planted outside as I would have liked to for to preserve for the year. What I decided to do yesterday is I decided I'm going to start flipping my greenhouse and doing another succession. So I will have my greenhouse running to November 1st. So essentially it gives me another whole season because we have about a hundred day season here. Um, my target is right around the beginning of November to shut my greenhouse down. So uh, I should have a full 100 day production um, if I start now flipping. So the side of my greenhouse that has all the weeds and the cut flowers, I've harvested about $1,400 worth of cut flowers out of there. And I don't think I'm going to harvest much more based on how many plants I have in there and just it's tired and it's weedy and I need to restart. So as I'm getting a lot more abundance outdoors, I have decided that I'm gonna rip out the stuff and start direct sowing stuff that is 80 days or less. So, um, or well, even less than 80 days. I have a lot of 65 day stuff. I have zinnias, which is 45 to 65 days or 55 days for the sunflowers. There's a lot of things, I on the lawnmower. There's, it's so hot out, oh my gosh, it's so hot. I'm not used to this heat, you guys. Um, better not forget my basket of goodies. Uh, go collect the eggs and then we'll go do chores. Um, but anyway, distractions much. I, I decided that this would be what was right for me. Um, this will give me a full spectrum um, because I am putting in a ball border, uh, like, a, like a, a tulip border. So we'll have tulips going in this fall. Um, and I think, I think it'll be a good opportunity for me to really learn how to grow in a greenhouse. This is my first year growing with this structure. And to be honest, the fact that I made 15, 14 or just about 1500 out of it, um, just winging it and basically living on a hope and a prayer, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, the outdoor stuff is just going to be bonus and that goes towards paying for my fall order which now I have an idea of what my florists are needing, what they need from me, and what I need to commit myself to for um, space and plants and like what is what it is that they actually need. Um, more, you know, less, less casual and more full on. So I've been able to keep my one florist just about fully stocked every week, just about, just for the day-to-day -day stuff, clearly not for weddings. But you know, that makes me feel good because she's got a lot of services. Um, like there's been lots of funerals and anniversaries and birthdays. And it makes me feel really good that I've put enough into this greenhouse that I've been able to harvest enough that has kept her going this month or for, for, the, for the last six to eight weeks. Um, you know, the beginning was very slow, but now it's like, uh, it's it's a it's significant. It's a significant amount of flowers that I'm able to take in, and so with the stuff coming in outside, the dahlia is coming into bloom, the zinnia is coming into bloom. I think it'll be a great time for me to start flipping my greenhouse. So that's that's where I'm at with that.
He's so hot. The little stinkers don't want to come in and go to bed. I don't blame them. It is so hot. We're not used to this. I might actually go get some frozen corn and throw it inside of the coop so that they can peck away at it and encourage them to come in and go to bed because we're going to get a heck of a storm. And there's some predators around here that they can't be outside all night. Hey Bailey. Hey sweet mama. Hey sweetie. Oh, Coconut's gonna come and chase her away. Hey, Coconut. You're so jealous. Yeah. Need some bug spray, buddy? Oh yeah, you're getting bit up. These little stinkers won't go to bed either. Okay, I can't even tell you how proud I am of this. So gorgeous. So happy with these. Tuxedo Time Calla Lily Mix. Love it so much. In a crate. Well, you guys, I think that's a wrap for me today. I'm going to take this, put it in the house, and then I think I'm going to go finish the chores, work with the horses, give them some bug spray, and call it a day. Look at these guys, Larkspur, loving them. Can't wait for them all to bloom. Aren't they lovely? I harvested a bunch of pink ones and delivered them already to Rhonda the florist. But uh, there's some more starting. All different colors of pink. Still nothing for the Lysianthus and nothing for the Glads, should be soon. The larkspur, larkspur is singing glory and hollyhock soon. I learned that you can actually use hollyhocks as a cut flower. You have to singe the end of them so they don't create a sap that makes it so they don't last in the vase. So I'm gonna try it and see if it works because I really like them and they're easier to grow than carnations. And I think they would be the place of carnations in some design kind of elements. But anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me today and doing one of my first main harvests of the year. It's really exciting. We grew this together and I'm really, I'm really feel abundantly blessed that I was able to share it with you. Much love. Bye for now.